I should uh, take this opportunity to say thank you for the um, welcome and the support that I've had from across um, the sector since uh, Ed Miliband um, gave me this, um, this role. Um, I've met um, a number of the people in this audience, but I'm conscious that there are still a huge number of people in the sector that I haven't met. Um, those of you here who are here today, I hope um, that you will be willing to meet uh, with me. Uh, I am very conscious that I still have a lot to learn um, about the sector. Nevertheless, um, I'm about eight months into this brief, and I think I've met now about 120, 130 um, charities uh, of one kind um, or another, based um, many in London, but many outside London um, too. And when the conversation uh, with those um, representatives has turned um, to the government, what I have consistently heard has been frustration with the lack of leadership, the lack of serious, heavyweight, uh, ministerial leadership at cabinet level in particular for charities across Whitehall and a profound sense too uh, that the government is standing up for uh, the wrong um, people. Now everyone I know uh, wants to live in a um, community where there are lots of charities uh, active. They don't of course put it in those terms uh, but the youth clubs, the law centre, Saturday football, swimming clubs, the Mencap Day Centre, the hospice are hugely valued um, by um, the communities um, that we all live in. And the campaigns too that uh, charities run, the excellent work of the Child Poverty Action Group or Help the Heroes or, um, or Oxfam are all um, valued um, enormously too. Charities at their best are provocative, um, they're innovative, uh, but above all they're compassionate. And it seems to me that they are the very essence of what is, um, the be what is best about being uh, British. Make charity stronger and you have more confident communities and you have a better um, country. Make charities weaker, well you can um, fill in um, the rest. St Mungo's is a charity that I suspect most of you will um, be aware of. Its purpose is to help the homeless find a place to live, it helps them secure um, financial uh, help and it uh, organises uh, uh, plans for them to get back into, uh, into work. Newham Education Business Partnership is a charity that helps young people in one of Britain's toughest areas get work experience uh, and um, interview skills. And the third charity that I'd um, highlight is Cancer Research UK. They're supporting research, as you're all, I'm sure, aware, into the science of cancer. And in so doing, building um, one of the biggest world-class centres uh, for such research, due to open in um, 2015. Now, St Mungo's with its skills at getting people back into work in uh, the most challenging circumstances, you would have thought would be the perfect participant uh, for the government's uh, work programme. But having had no referrals under the work programme uh, uh, in almost um, 12 months, St Mungo's finally called it a day uh, with the work programme this week. You couldn't make it up, could you? Here is uh, a country uh, having record uh, unemployment, We've got a work programme that's not exactly going all guns um, blazing. And a charity with huge experience in this area has not even been called upon once uh, for help in getting somebody um, back to work. Newham Education Business Partnership, it's based in one of Britain's most deprived um, boroughs, home to the Olympics. And even at a time of record youth unemployment, it has lost so much um, government um, funding that its board is worried about its long-term sustainability and is seeking a merger uh, partner. Now, of course, there would have been cuts under our plan to reduce uh, the deficit. But the cuts didn't need to be so deep, so fast. They could have been done fairer. And why did charities working in the most deprived areas uh, see uh, so uh, deep um, cuts, just surely, at the time uh, when those areas need the help of charities the most. And Cancer Research UK, given that one in three people in this country will get cancer, you would have thought that the government would want to ensure that that planned world-class centre, the Francis Crick Institute, wouldn't see its donations dry up. Yet because of the charity tax relief cap announced in the budget, that is exactly what their chief executive is concerned uh, will happen. So on the big strategic questions facing civil society, Ministers are not showing leadership, whether it's government contracts, whether it's philanthropy, whether it's government funding. It seems to me that the Cabinet Office is either not going into battle or it's not winning 
any of those crucial um, battles. Now, I've searched the columns of um, civil society high and low, and if you'll forgive me, I've searched also the columns of one or two other um, outlets that focus on uh, civil society. And I cannot see an occasion recently when Francis Maud last spoke up for charities. I certainly can't see anything that Francis Maud has said about the charity tax relief cap. Now, one has to be, um, one has to be fair. There are positives in the last um, two years, too, that are well worth um, celebrating. The National Citizen Service is, as Lord Wallace said, a very interesting um, scheme. But one needs to set that in context. Other forms of social action are being very hard hit by funding cuts. The Chief Executive of Volunteering England, warning only a couple of weeks ago that the network of volunteer centres is potentially set to fragment because of local authority funding cuts. The Small Donations Bill, announced in the Queen's speech, seems at first glance essentially a very good thing. It could make a real difference to small charities. But again, when you set it in the context of huge funding cuts across uh, the sector. And then there's the Social Investment Wholesale Bank, now called Big Society um, Capital. The final stages of a difficult pregnancy for that idea are almost complete. A Labour idea and the Coalition, it seems to me, have done the right thing by continuing to bring um, it um, forward. But again, when you look at the context for the social finance market and you see that the community interest tax relief uh, is also included in the charity tax relief cap, there is real concern that the social finance market isn't going to grow as fast as it might do. So it is the big issues where warnings were given and where warnings uh, were ignored, where ministers, I think, are most um, culpable. Now, I'm currently under the Freedom of Information process seeking the risk register for the work programme because I believe and have been told that ministers were warned and deliberately ignored advice that charities would lose out under the work programme. Francis Maud promised that charities would get some 35 to 40 per cent of referrals under the work programme. Nothing like that has happened. About 20 per cent at best. No wonder that there are 100 fewer charities signed up to the work programme as a result at the moment. Or that some 90 per cent of prime contractors are the big private sector government services uh, companies. You take um, Stewart's organisation, NCVO's uh, estimate about the, fund, the scale of the funding cuts across the sector. £3.3 billion over the, this parliament being lost um, to civil societies. And ministers were warned that charities working in the most deprived areas would suffer disproportionately. They chose to ignore those warnings. And then there's the charity tax relief um, debacle. The Office for Civil Society is now based in the Treasury. So George Osborne only had to pop down the corridor to get some advice about how that particular proposal would go um, down. The reasons for the measure have changed on almost a weekly basis. First it was tax avoidance, then it was an adverse European court ruling, then it was dodgy charities, and I think at the moment now it's just dodgy foreign uh, charities. The truth is that once the government had decided they were going to reduce that top tax rate down to 45 pence, millionaires getting lower taxes, their sums didn't add up. So philanthropic donations have been hit alongside a series of other measures too. The truth is that George Osborne is determined not to give way on this issue. I'm told Steve Hilton has tried to persuade him to back down. I'm told Vince Cable has tried to get him to back down. I'm told Jeremy Hunt has told him uh, he should back down. None of them have got anywhere so far. Two years into the coalition, whilst there has been some good individual initiatives, some of them that Lord Wallace set out, the truth is, I think, that charities are being sidelined, that the interests of the sector are not really being fought for by cabinet ministers, and that the leadership that the sector needs from government isn't being given. And I think that's a tragedy. <laughs>